we've had three days of gains. We've got another morning potentially of the S&P 500 claiming. Can you help me understand whether this is a bounce that you want to get behind? Yeah, we wouldn't overplay it, John. We're seeing a bit of a relief here on the inflation front. Clearly, oil prices coming down are a really big deal. The economic data is pretty decent here, but we've got a lot coming up. Mike McKee mentioned CPI. We've got earnings season starting next week. We think there's going to be a big challenge here to profit margins as we move through. It's going to be really challenging given higher input costs, higher interest costs, higher labor costs. So a lot of big catalysts in the market coming up over the next couple of weeks. We wouldn't get too comfortable. There's been a lot of people that seem to be kind of not paying a lot of attention to the inverted yield curve, which re-inverted over the last uh, couple of days. We know that typically precedes a recession, so don't get too comfortable here. Chris, what are the nuances of the last number of days up we've seen? Which sectors are leading the way? Is there a distinction you can make there? Um, Tom, one thing I would say over the last couple of days is the equity market is more of a growth market. And what we've seen is we've seen rates come down. And, and as rates come down, growth is doing better. And, and so that's dragging the market up. And believe it or not, this time, at least in the short term, bad news is good news. But I, I would echo Emily's sentiment. We can't get behind a rally just yet. You're going to have some, some big rallies, some face ripping rallies. You're going to have some big sell offs. But at the end of the day, what you need to see is you need to see the Fed toggle down from 75 to 50 to 25 for, before you can see a sustained rally. Chris, have you got an idea of what brings about that change for this Fed? Is it in the data? Is it a pressure point in the market? What is it? John, I, I really wish I knew. And, 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 let me, and let me explain why. I cannot handicap Powell. I have no idea why he shifted back in January 19th. I have no idea why he shifted earlier from inflation dove to inflation hawk, right? It's not based on the data that I'm seeing. The data I'm seeing is saying commodity prices are coming down, energy prices are coming down, break evens are coming down, the consumer is reacting to price, something they did not do last year. Everything is saying inflation is abating. I just can't handicap Powell because in the past, I don't know what makes him change. Right. Emily Rowland, if inflation is abating, what has it done to an analysis of the revenue across all the different sectors of the earnings we're going to see? Do you bring down your revenue guesstimates as you try to game out what to do in the second half? You know, inflationary pressures are coming down, but they remain incredibly elevated. And I, we do think that that's going to be a challenge to profit margins, which are sitting at the highest level since the 1990s right now, 13.2% for the S&P 500. That's got to come down as we move through earnings season. But we do think that there are, are companies with great balance sheets, good return on equity, lots of cash on their balance sheets, which if Frank and the baby that's been sold off with the bathwater. So we're looking particularly at higher quality companies, which we do think can actually fare really well as we head through this earnings season. Emily, can you talk to me a little bit more about earnings season? You mentioned there where you think we could have some success. I want to understand the really hard question and try and answer this for me. Have we priced the shock that is coming through the retailers yet? Because when we hear from them, Good question. the stocks gap lower, and then we hear from them again, and the stocks gap lower. And then some people tell me, well, we understand this story. We've heard it so many times. We've been talking about it forever. And yet, Emily, it doesn't look priced every time we get a little drip feed of information. Is it priced? Yeah, I think that's fair, and it probably isn't as it relates to retail. There's a lot more pain to come to the consumer as they shift from a mindset of the things that they want versus the things that they need. And we're going to see them eschewing the things that they want. And that's clearly impacted retailers. It's also a double whammy because they're getting hit by the fact that they've built up their inventories too much and now demand is slowing. The thing to remember, though, is, and Chris made a great point about growth stocks bringing the market higher, retailers are a pretty tiny part of the S&P 500. So when we start to look at earnings yeah. season, the impact might actually be minimal. And we're more watching the, the tech space, the financial space, for clues about where the broad market goes from here.